Welcome to On Point at the Noosa Festival of Surfing, your daily update of everything festival. And also joining us, we have a host of special guests for interviews and talks. Now the festival is celebrating its 31st year this year, but it's not technically 31 years old. It's actually more like 26 years old because the, for the first few years, it ran as the Noosa Malibu Classic, put together by the Noosa Mal Club. Phil Jarrett, obviously a fantastic surf historian, has told us that story. But bringing it up today, the Noosa Mal Club is still an integral part of the festival every year. Joining me here is Mr. Glenn Gower, president of the Noosa Mal Club, and uh, also a fantastic surfer in the, uh, the senior age divisions. Glenn, tell us a little bit about the Noosa Mal Club and, uh, and what it means to the community today. Uh, the Mal Club is going really, really strong at the moment. Uh, we have around 160 members. Um, the last probably eight years we've been building our junior and, and female base. Uh, the event itself, uh, we still own the event, but obviously World Safari is running the event for us. Uh, and it's evolved this event over the years where it was too big for the club to run. Uh, now it's the club's legacy to the town because it brings so much uh, money and goodwill and just stoke to the town. So we're, we're just happy that it's still running. It's a fantastic event and um, the club could not be prouder of this event. Behind the scenes, the team at the Noosa Mail Club also works tirelessly with hosts of volunteers working as uh, beach marshals and you know, supporting the festival in all of the technical bits and pieces that we don't see behind the scenes. Absolutely. Um, a lot of these um, volunteers, they're all club members. They take the week off work. They want to be involved with this event because it's so much fun for them. And they're just happy to come down and help out and see this event evolve every year and get bigger and stronger every year. And we couldn't have the festival without them. Their tireless support is invaluable. So Glenn Gower, thank you so much. Thanks, and Tom. please extend it to all of the Noosa Malibu Club members. I will, thank you very much. One of the most dynamic events every single year is the Teams Challenge. It's fast and furious with four teams of four members running in and out of the water, catching waves, coming back and t t tagging their team members. It's absolutely fantastic on the beach and it builds such enthusiasm. We had some amazing action earlier on this week from the Teams Challenge. Joining me now is Kira Molnar, the president of the Noosa World Surfing Reserve. Kira, tell us a bit about the World Surf Reserve and what it does to preserve the paradise that we have here. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I stepped into this role recently um, and ever since then it's been go, go, go. So right now we're dealing with a lot of cultural things in terms of surf etiquette. Um, and uh, the culture within the water. We're also working on a lot of surf safety issues at the moment. So we've just installed DFIBs throughout the national park. Um, we've got education programs within our surf etiquette. And then we're pretty lucky environmentally here. We don't have too much um, to s disrupt the beautiful places that we have, but we work closely with the parks and also like Surf Rider Foundation and everything to keep this place as pristine as it is. Wonderful, it's incredible work. Now, um Obviously you're a female, first female <laughs> president of the Noosa World Surf Reserve. It's International Women's Day today and uh, so it's great to have a, a woman leading the charge for, um, you know, to protect the surfers in the water. But you also got to 
lead out the uh, the paddle out on uh, on Saturday. How was that as the first female to, to lead out our traditional paddle out, paddle out after 31 years? Yeah, it's a pretty exciting thing. Um, it's awesome to be the first. Uh, I, yeah, it's really, really special. And I think with this Women's Day breaking the bias, I think a lot of women are stepping up and taking on bigger roles. Uh, and it's really great to see. So it's growing and I think the future will grow more with women surfing um, and just stepping up into roles such as taking out the paddle out, which is a pretty prestigious thing at this wonderful event. So, yeah. And we've been lucky this year to, be, to have been joined by Lane Beachley, uh, seven times uh, women's world champion and also Brooke Farris, the first uh, female CEO of Rip Curl. Um, so incredible women doing incredible things. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think previously uh, there hasn't necessarily been those ro role models. Um, there, like the women that came before that charged ahead, there wasn't always that women role model to look up through as a CEO of Rip Curl or like a seven time world champion, you know what I mean? So it's so good to see them leading the way and having someone not just to follow, follow but also to make our own way. Um, and I think it's really breaking barriers down for the younger generations to see the women stepping up into these roles and it'll make it easier for the future generations as well. So it's awesome. Are you seeing that reflected in the water as well? Are you finding more, more gender equality in the water? Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember when I was younger in the 90s surfing out here and I'd be the only girl out there um, behind the pot or something like that. And uh, it's, it's really good. There's so many women surfing of all ages and it's just really nice to have that camaraderie. Um, and in saying that, not just women, but just having that equality within the surfing of everyone, no matter what, um, it's really good to see it coming through. So, yeah. Well, Kira, thank you so much for all your work with Noosa World Surf Reserve and also being such a, a fantastic ambassador of the Noosa Festival of Surfing. Thanks so much, Tommy. <laughs>